Welcome to the second episode of the Drive Fitness Podcast. My guest today is a long-term friend of mine, and he actually inspired me to create my own YouTube channel. Welcome, Dan Irwin. What's up, man? I'm happy to be here. Great. I'm happy to have you. Hell yeah. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Just in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic, but still thriving. So I know, right? It's stressing me <laughs> out. It's pretty crazy. But at the same time, dude, we're here. We're making this podcast. Yep. I'm glad we're making the best of it, you know? Hell yeah. All right. So let's get into why I brought you on the show. Um, you have your own YouTube channel. Correct. I actually, you know, I started watching your videos and it kind of inspired me to create my own channel. Um, when did you create this channel and, and what made you do so? Initially, I created it, I think, summer of 2017, and my first YouTube video um, was basically like a skit, and it was me talking about how social media is like mindless entertainment, Okay. and then I kind of spun off making like random videos. Some were like deep, talking about death and like why it's a good thing, why it should push you. It didn't really have any like direction, Mm -hmm. but I removed all those videos like a year ago. And I started fresh, and now my channel split into three categories, music, fitness, and self-improvement. Okay. So I've been doing a few 30-day challenges, and um, I have a few fitness goals that I'm talking about, too. Mm. So it's kind of taken a turn, but I think it's for the better. Interesting, man. So I got to bring it back a sec. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it was a lot at once. (laughs) You you piqued my interest with that video about death. Um, That's not on the channel anymore, is it? No, yeah, that was like 2018, and I I took that one down I'm I'm curious. Why does death push you? (laughs) I think it does. um, I feel like if we were to live forever, we wouldn't have a reason to, like, wake up in the morning. We wouldn't have a reason to push for our goals. You wouldn't have a reason to make your app. Mm -hmm. And I feel like... The fact that we do die, the fact that there is a point where we're not going to be here anymore pushes us to actually achieve things and to like, I mean, some people don't really like embrace that fact, but I was trying to bring light to it Mm -hmm. so that people can see it the way I do. And that's kind of what inspired me to make my channel too and to not waste any time, you know, like, and I feel like it's pretty important for us all to live like that. No, I I completely agree, man. Um, Part of the reason that I work so hard on my app and my company is that, you know, I'm I'm trying to do something... um, that'll last in the small amount of time mm-hmm. I have. Right. Yeah. If, if I had all the time in the world, then I wouldn't really feel that urge to like leave a legacy behind, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So I do think, um, the fear of death can be an extremely, extremely positive thing. I'm pretty familiar with the self improvement videos. Mm-hmm. I know you have one that is a 30 day, uh, no social media challenge. And then one of them was a sober October. So basically a 30 days without substance mm-hmm. challenges. Yep. Um, which one of those was harder? Who? I would say no social media. Really? Probably because I mean, I don't really drink too often. Probably like once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks. So it's like, and I don't really have any like substance abuse problems. So that was just like me taking a break from like that kind of lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Whereas no social media, like that's fully ingrained into like my lifestyle, and yeah, it was like a really big change, and um. The hardest part was just like finding a way to like allocate my time differently Mm -hmm. because like I'm just so accustomed to just being on my phone, like just like scrolling like for hours. Well, not for hours on end, but like it's just like it's a habit and it's just something that's like you don't realize like how invested you are into it uh, until you don't have that option anymore to do it. Mm -hmm. And at first, like I was scrolling through like ESPN, the weather, like anything that wasn't social media just because I had that like habit of being on my phone. Mm hmm. But I had to like remove other apps. That way I was like fully like detached from my phone completely to where I could like show more interest in other hobbies. So I was able to get back into playing guitar. Um, I started reading a lot more and I was outside. Have you actually like noticed a difference after the challenge and, and, you know, see yourself kind of taking a step back from social media? feel like all the cons of social media outweigh the benefits for me and i'm just able to see just like how toxic it can be and i'm Mm -hmm. like less engaged as a result so it's easier to like have a lot more control and then what about the sober october challenge how did it feel to you know get a clear head for a month it felt pretty good i felt a lot sharper as a result and it did play a role in like other aspects of my life too like in work i was working a lot more efficiently and I wasn't as like, 
I felt a lot more confident in myself for being able to like do that as well as like not relying on alcohol or, or like anything else to like socialize and being okay, just being sober. So it kind of like sparked more confidence in me and I felt a lot more drive to just like do other things with my time. And like, it just made me like more, like more productive overall. So hey, glad to hear you got that drive, man. Hey. That's what this podcast is hey. all about, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, man. So moving into the fitness category, right? Um, you and me actually made a little fun fitness video. Yeah, uh, if you guys want to check it out at home, it's on Dan's YouTube page. I might link it in the description below. But we basically just kind of goofed around and had fun at the gym, right? And you gave some kind of tips here and there, mm -hmm. but made sure to, you know, put it out there that you're not an expert. Yeah. It was more of an inspirational thing. Mm -hmm. It was just more trying to, like, inspire people to be active, it's like, especially right now with the whole coronavirus situation it's just pretty important to like even though we can't go to the gyms it's important to stay active and to like continue a healthy lifestyle and stuff so i just wanted to put my two cents out there i guess just to keep at it yeah i know stay active so it's great dude one of the things that i really um admire about your channel is that it seems like you set these goals for yourself right either a fitness goal or you know a self-improvement goal and then your YouTube channel kind of keeps you in check, right? Mm -hmm. It yeah. kind of holds you accountable. Exactly, yeah. So the fact that you got to put out fitness videos every once in a while now, you know, it motivates you to stay in shape and, exactly. you know, holds yeah. you accountable to that, you know, part of your life. Because it's pretty good being able to influence people and, like, try to have an impact on other people's lives as well as keeping my, like, myself in check, too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of good to have both ends of that. Yeah. I think the way I'm starting to structure my YouTube channel, it seems like you're doing the same, right? Is it's like, okay, I'm going to make these YouTube videos for me, right? They're going to help me be a better person. And then if they inspire other people, amazing, great. If they exactly, share my yeah. ideas, that's, uh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But like, I think you got to start with yourself, right? Um, when it comes to a YouTube channel, instead of just trying to make content that you think other people want to listen to or more see. more of an expression of who you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the main, that's the main goal for me at least. I totally agree, dude. Same here. Um, do you have any advice on just kind of how to like be yourself, how to let your true self shine through when you're doing these YouTube videos? Yeah. So I try to make sure it's not over the top and I think it's important to have a balance between like being yourself as well as like trying to portray something like serious mm -hmm. or something that's like actually informative. But I feel like it came naturally to me. Like I'm not really afraid of the camera, I guess, but some people have that like camera shyness and all that but i just feel like you can't view it as being something that like that has pressure like you shouldn't be under pressure you shouldn't feel like you have to portray this person that you're not it's just like mm -hmm. you have to just shine through and just let yourself you know just fucking be yourself like it's that simple mm -hmm. but you kind of have to like not see it as like oh shit like the camera's rolling i need to be like that like yeah like i need to say everything perfectly i need but i mean it's really not that complicated it's just gotta be yourself yeah, no, that's great advice. Just trying to like <laughs> avoid, you know, focusing on the fact that the camera's rolling. Um, I think I someone gave me the advice of basically saying, okay, record a video and just tell yourself this is never going out on the internet, right? No way. Yeah. And then give it a try and, you know, it might turn out good. You might actually want to put it out there, right? But if you kind of just take yourself out of that headspace of like, oh my gosh, people are going to be watching this and critiquing this, then, you know, it's, it's going to mess up your performance and kind mm -hmm. of make you a little bit more on edge, you know, than you Yeah, and then you're not going to be able to portray who you really are at that point. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it also helps me not care about what people think, mm -hmm. which is, like, very beneficial, like, overall, like, in the scale of, like, everything that you do in life. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I can practice being myself, like, on camera and, like, showing it to the world allows me to, like, practice that, and that way I'm not, like, like always pressed about what people are thinking mm -hmm. because it just allows you to be more confident and being, like, happy with who you are. So I feel like it's a good thing to do. What do you want to do with, with music? So I'm thinking about doing EDM reaction videos, thinking about doing like singles or albums where I do like a live reaction. Um, and that could just be for the artists that like I'm really into. Um, or it doesn't have to be bound to EDM. It could be any music. Is, I'm into everything. But I want the core of the music side of my channel to be EDM based. And I'm going to start DJing soon. So I'm hoping that I'm skilled in that enough to post any mix that I make. Mm -hmm. but i think that's where i'm going to be going with the music side now you're no fitness expert but dan dude you've gotten in amazing shape in the past year dude i, I gotta mm -hmm. give you a hand dude slight slight come I on i wouldn't say amazing but i've made improvements here and there 
the cut, man. You you got Slights. a you, you got a good look going on. So what is your workout routine right now then? So um I was pretty adamant about the bro split like for the past like what's couple a, what's a bro split? That's back and by chest and try, legs. Um so that's basically like the standard that like most people do. Yeah. But recently I've been doing like what I'm feeling. So I'll mm-hmm. hit like chest and back one day or then another I might hit chest and try or, or I might hit shoulders and chest. And then with back, you know, like I feel like the more you mix it up and the more variety you have, it, the more beneficial it is. Cause mm-hmm. like you're kind of always giving your entire body like a surprise and like it's harder to plateau that way. I feel like. So what about cardio? Do you ever run or I play basketball? That's the okay. extent of my cardio I probably play. I mean, I shoot around like almost every day, mm-hmm. but I play like full core games like once a week. Cause I'm in a club back home. You're in a club. Yeah, it's a basketball. Nice. So you, you get full like scrimmage games in mm-hmm. uh, weekly. Yeah, it's like two that's hours. Amazing, dude. Every Wednesday night. Hell yeah. So that's like the extent of my cardio. Part of the reason I started this channel is because I'm actually trying to work towards inventing like a smart gym. Um, I have the fitness app that um, I've been working on for years. There's a bunch of you know tutorial videos on this channel about kind of um, the app that I've been making along the way. But ideally, I want all of the data to be sent, you know, automatically to the app, right? Um, in some like futuristic gym that I kind of have in mind. So I kind of want to ask all my guests, Dan, you walk into a gym 30 years from now, what do you expect to be there? 30 years from now? What is that experience like when you go to the gym 30 years from now? When you head into the next 30 years, I mean, it's hard to predict, but mm-hmm. I mean, along the lines of your app, I feel like that could be like integrated into gyms maybe mm-hmm. like it could, there could be like a some kind of universal app that allows you to track like mm-hmm. everything that you do mm-hmm. and i feel like yeah you know, that could be a possibility for for the future mm-hmm. you know what aspects of your fitness regimen do you want to see kind of like improved i guess through technology hmm <laughs> that's a tough one lifting cardio basketball you want to go to like a basketball hoop Starts shooting around and and the basketball hoop keeps track of like, like how how many shots you made, how many shots you missed, where you shot from, you know. That'd be really cool. If you go shoot some hoops and you go home, like do you know the percentage of shots you made? Nah. Don't you think in thirty years, you know, we could easily kind That's of possible, have sensors yeah. in those balls and those hoops and kind of know all that information? That'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think so. I'm. I mean, yeah, I think it's possible for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I, I just kind of wanted to pry out, you know, a little bit of um, my own ideas, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I do think that specifically with basketball, it wouldn't be too hard, right? You just have a sensor on the ball, and yeah, then, like on the net. I mean, that's... we already have those. If you go to an arcade, right? You shoot, oh, yeah. you shoot, you shoot. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's How true. How come if you go to a gym and you pick up a basketball and start fucking around, it's not like it's not sending that to your phone and letting you mm-hmm. know like what you did? I feel like we're behind, right? I just don't Actually, know. Though, like, why do these are little arcades that have been around for fifteen years? How long have basketball hoops been tracking? Uh, ever since I can remember, at least thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, why is that not like a general kind of? You go to a gym, you check out I a mean, basketball. I just feel like having an app is just another like component to it that hasn't been invented yet. But you know, like having it tracked like through the gaming system, mm-hmm. like is easier because I guess there's a sensor on the net, and then every time the ball goes through, like yeah, it, like you get points for it. But for it to like connect to your phone, I feel like that's the main challenge or the mm-hmm. main hurdle. Yeah. So I don't know how that would work, but I mean, you can be the first to do it. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to right. I, a lot of gyms do have apps these days, but like they mostly just basically let you schedule classes. You know, it's nothing. Yeah. It's nothing like interesting. So I think there's a lot more potential there, but yeah, I'm right. And it feels like to me, the technology for specifically that basketball idea is just kind of, it's been sitting there for a minute. Yeah. Apps have been around for a decade. Let's see. Oh, do you have any, I showed you some of my uh, tutorial videos on um, just kind of like the early iterations of drive. Do you have any feedback for me as a YouTuber on like kind of how I can improve um, those videos? I think you're off to a pretty good start. I think that's like a good foundation for your channel. Mm-hmm. But in the one um, drive inspiration, like your first mm-hmm. video, I feel like the delivery of it could have been better. So mm-hmm. that's my like one criticism. That's kind of why I wanted to start like this interview style because I just felt like 
a conversation so much more engaging, you yeah, know? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I, I do feel like this is kind of the next step of improving that video. Mm -hmm. And I think the more people that you have on here, the more feedback you'll get mm -hmm. and the more you'll learn from like other people's backgrounds and it can like feed into your app and like what you're doing. And I just, I mean, I just think overall it's going to be like more engaging for like you mm -hmm. and for the audience and for the people who are here. Yeah. So like overall, like it's going to be sick. Yeah, right. I'm not like an expert on most of these topics. So I think it's going to like give me some sort of credibility with my channel, talking mm -hmm. to people, being like, hey, I don't know about this. Like, let me talk to somebody who does, you yeah. know. Um, so I'm pretty excited about the future of this. And yeah, I'm excited and grateful that you came on today. Um, you Thanks know, for having me. Like, like I said, uh, going to interview a lot of fitness people, health people, Tech technology people. people yeah. But like this right here uh is about my app but this is the youtube channel right and i mm -hmm. really wanted to get you here in the second episode because i don't think it would exist maybe not as fast at least if you didn't inspire me man True. so i truly honestly you know appreciate what you've done i hope you keep it up and thanks, bro. yeah i'm excited to see what you got to do in the future yeah man no problem thanks for having me seriously i think this is only the beginning and i'm excited to work alongside you on this youtube grind Feel like we have a lot of potential for you with this podcast and your app and then for me with my channel too so i'm excited to see where it goes and we're just getting started so hell yeah man we're just getting started oh yeah all right let's go baby <laughs>